You're watching Adorama TV. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Adorama TV iPad App Reviews. Well, in the last episode I mentioned that Adobe has released three new iPad apps that really have people talking in the photography community. And so in the last episode we looked at Adobe Nav. This week we're going to take a look at Adobe Easel. It's an application that allows you to paint with your fingers on your iPad. But the thing that sets this apart from other applications is the way that the paint works and its ability to instantly take those paintings and throw them over to Photoshop to use as textures or backgrounds or just for further refinement. So let's take a closer look at Adobe Easel. Adobe Easel is an application that is a standalone application as well as something that can connect to Photoshop CS5 and above. You can see down here this blue icon indicates that I've already connected that to Photoshop. So to do that on your Photoshop CS5 5 or above, or CS5 and above, you just go to the edit menu, go down to your remote connections, and then make sure that you've typed in a service name. I've just named this Photoshop Mark Laptop because it's my laptop. And then you'll need a password. So I've already set that up, so I'm gonna hit cancel. But then what happens is when you open uh, this application, you can just go in there and select uh, your connection and you can have several different connections so maybe you can connect to your desktop laptop or maybe a client's desk so it's really nice so i've already done that now uh, what we can do here in easel is we can do all kinds of things to create photos now the nice thing about this is uh, if you just click once on the screen you'll get this little menu but that's no fun the fun way to do this is to actually use your whole hand. And so when you put your whole hand on here, you get different menu items. So the first finger is for color, the second is for size, opacity, settings, and then your thumb is to do things like undo, redo, and delete. Or you can just click once and you get the same thing. So let's start working on this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose a color. So I'm gonna go down here and choose like a nice blue color. And once I have that, I will click and I'm gonna get a brush size so I can make this larger or smaller. So I'll make it about that size. And then I'll choose my opacity. I like it to be nice and opaque, so it's very solid. And now I can just start painting. And this is sort of like watercolors. So it actually dries after you've uh, left it on the canvas for a little bit. So I'm gonna go down here and I'll show you a better illustration of this. So I'm gonna get a nice red, and then I'm going to change the size to something a little bit larger. Now what you'll see is if I paint down here, I get a nice line. But if I paint into the blue, well the blue is some paint and it hasn't actually dried yet. You can see it just bleeds right into that blue. And so that's sort of what happens with this. It acts like uh, more of a watercolory canvas than, uh, than a normal painting application, which is sort of fun. So I can go in there, I can sort of start changing different colors, really quickly changing the size of my brush, painting this over, maybe change the opacity, make that a little less opaque so I can really blend stuff in. And if you're an artist, you can make something that looks pretty cool. I'm not a very good painter, so mine looks like a purple hot dog. But you get the idea. You can really quickly make some really nice uh, backgrounds, some different paintings, and you can take these then and throw them over to Photoshop. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go over here to settings, and then I'm going to, you can either save this to photos as well, so it's a standalone application, but what we want to do is throw this over to Photoshop. So I'll click on that, and that says send to Photoshop. And sure enough, if I look to Photoshop, there's my painting, and so I can go in there and start playing with it. Now, it looks like it came in upside down. That's because the orientation of my iPad was upside down according to Photoshop. So you might have to go in there and change that, uh, just, you know, uh, rotate that 180 degrees and you should be just fine. So that's one thing that I think uh, could be improved, that the orientation is instantly recognized, but that's a very, very small glitch. Now, once I have that in there, I can start uh, doing all kinds of things in Photoshop. Um, and so it's just a really nice application that allows you to quickly create something on the iPad and then send it to Photoshop for either using it in compositing or it's standalone artwork. And if you don't have Photoshop, no problem. You can always go in here, click Save to Photos, and it'll save right to your photo gallery, and then you can share that with friends using your normal iPad photo gallery. Well, that's Adobe Easel, and it's highly addictive. I love being able to play with it. Um, it's, it's so intuitive. It's one of the funnest applications I've played with on the iPad, um, and I think you'll find you use it for all types of things to really spice up your images in Photoshop. Well, next week, we're going to take a look at the last of the Adobe applications that they recently uh, launched, and that one is called Color Lava, and I think it's one of my favorite apps that I've ever seen on the iPad. So make sure you stay tuned.
Well, thanks for joining me this week. Remember, if you have an iPad app that you'd like to see, you can always send your suggestions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Again, thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.